focuses on the topic digital readiness and building an innovative appetite as a CFO. And for this, I would like to invite on stage Ms. Sandhya, who is the group CFO at Narayana Health. Giving a brief introduction, Sandhya joined Narayana Health as group CFO in December 2021. And prior to joining Narayana, Sandhya has close to 20 plus years of experience in Unilever and Vipro groups performing a broad spectrum of roles such as business partnering, audit and risk, ombuds, digital transformation, etc. She was also placed as Asia's 100 power leaders by finance by White Page International and India's top 100 women in finance by AIWMI. With this, let's welcome her with a big round of applause. Thank you. Am I audible? Fabulous. I think most of what I had to say, Bhaskar has already said. So I will try not to repeat and maybe that will help me keep the time. Uh, the topic that's given to me is digital readiness and uh, building an innovation appetite. Um, so I want to start with, uh, so when I was uh, talking to one of my friends saying and speaking at the Future of Finance Summit, he was jokingly asking, is there a future for finance? You know, at some point in time, machines will take over. And I think this was the question Sukriti also asked, saying, uh, you know, if AI and, you know, all the intelligence is going to be with machines, then what will finance do? And uh, actually, it, it is not an untrue statement, but what the popular, uh, uh, popular answer to anybody who's asked that question is that a person who can use technology and AI will definitely take over the job of a person who cannot use technology and AI. People may not lose jobs. So that is the, uh, you know, the uh, answer. But I want to dwell this a little more and a lot of this Bhaskar already covered. But it's also happy that all of us who are thinking about finance are first starting with us uh, as, as a talent and are we ready? Um, so at some point in time, a formal accounting qualification was considered gold standard and we have arrived. You know, you've slogged four years to do that CA, not seen the light of the day or the when the day ends and we think it's all done. But it is no longer relevant. The chat GPT can do most of your accounting stuff eventually, maybe already. So table stakes may not be required. Uh, financial reporting is a technical competence today. It has to be a solution to business problem tomorrow. Knowledge of IT systems, today we feel we are extremely tech savvy if we know how to use ERPs, if we know how to use IT to create efficiency in business. So if you have run five automation projects in the organization, we feel we have arrived from a technology point of view. But that's in, in the future, we should be able to choose solutions this, uh, which can help solve problems, but also how do you use IT to create business value? I think we, some of us already do it, but the intensity will be far more deeper. Analytics, um, today it's all about how do you make sense out of data. There is an analytic, intrinsic analytic orientation that comes to us by, by, by persona, by character, but in the future, our ability to work with large data, large unstructured data, is going to be the differentiator. Today, if we see any successful uh, tech company, <coughs> any tech company, you take Microsoft, Amazon, uh, Uber, they all run on the, on the top of significant amount of large data. And all those data are processed by the business teams to get to some outcomes. But what role does finance play? When we look in those tech companies, almost nothing. We still do accounting and at the most we automate the analytics in our information system. You know, but if we are not getting into understanding how is that data going to help me price better, help me influence pricing decisions, if we are not going to get into looking at, say, this is the inventory decisions that are being taken with this data. Now, are those decisions right? How can I influence those decisions to make them better? If we are not going to play that role, then they may not need us at all tomorrow. Now, problem solving is a matter of intelligence. Going forward, problem solving, even today, it's becoming problem solving will be a matter of mindset, a digital mindset. Um, this is something that uh, our ability to tell stories, and this I always feel finance people lack a bit. We are very good in being able to explain facts in a clear and concise way, but telling the story, telling why, a particular business outcome has to be influenced in a particular direction. I think it's a skill we'll need to build. 
Uh, interpersonal skill today is about building uh, uh, connections, but tomorrow it will be about co-creation. So today our expertise as leaders is application of competence. Tomorrow our expertise will be at the intersection of competence and innovation. That is really where we have to be headed as a finance team to make progress. So uh, this is really I think what Bhaskar also spoke about that we have to move from a controlling mindset to a chief future officer mindset. And uh, um, the if you traditionally if you look at our time uh, or mental energy that goes into a lot of it goes on the bottom bucket. A lot of our time gets spent on reporting. Then with that reporting we do some analysis and then we influence action. Now really for us to be the finance of future, we have to flip this decision. This, this, this reporting part will fairly get automated and I will talk about some real life examples in my own organization as we go through this. A large part of our time has to go on action and I am going to take two examples. One thanks to Bhaskar, I was very inspired. Bang in the middle of COVID, you know when banks were giving us uh, healthcare organizations a throwaway prices loan and land was available at the cheapest price, none of us had the courage to buy land, build, create capacity. Healthcare organizations in the middle of COVID when there was so much demand for healthcare, we did not have the courage and they had the courage when no one was flying and no one ever knew that we will fly. That is big decision. Do you have the courage to take those big decisions? I think it's an amazing case study and Bhaskar, I'm going to quote you freely in my future, uh, future sessions. Um, the other one, uh, which I want, another example I want to give is Wimbledon. When the SARS outbreak happened in 2003, they took a policy. It was, uh, I think, uh, 1.9 uh, million dollars or something they paid uh, as a uh, 1.9 million dollars of uh, premium they took. It took them like 19 years they kept paying the premium, some 30 plus million dollars they paid. But then when COVID came, they actually got a 100 plus million dollar compensation for the loss of business during COVID. Big decision, some CFO had the courage to stick on to that insurance even though there was I think 2-3 years before COVID, no one will have ever imagined that Wimbledon will get cancelled. No one will ever imagine. But still he had that courage to stay on with that insurance, to say at some point in time when I need it, I need it. So these are the big decisions that we will have to have bandwidth to take, which means we have to take our mind outside this reporting and analysis and month close and sending the MIS on time and uh, you know ensuring that uh, <laughs> all our numbers add up, <laughs> what was the forecast number versus how much got met, who missed that 100k uh, revenue. <laughs> So we have to move from that and we have to move here to action. So this is a Harvard, uh, you know, uh, journey. People will, when people are going through a digital journey in their mind as talent, you know, we start with say uh, indifference. We say I can learn but I don't see any benefit. Sometimes we feel oppressed saying oh no, I, I, I want to learn but you know, I don't think I'm capable of learning. Then we go to frustrated saying, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think there is, but you know, what is the point? I can't do it. Um, but then, when we make the journey to inspire, I am capable of learning, I can also add value to my company, that's when we make the switch. So, I want to talk about my own case study. So, when I joined Narayana, um, this was, I'm coming up on my second anniversary now. So, I had a handover from my uh, predecessor, before that I used to work with Wipro. The most precious asset, I have Sandeep also here from Wipro at, uh, and he may agree with me, the most precious asset of the CFO in Wipro were the Excel files. You know, all the Excel files of the past 10 year sales performance, uh, you know, uh, order book performance, margin performance, um, varied amount of data and then I came into this role and I asked the CFO saying, okay fine, you've given me such a beautiful handover, now where are the Excel files? And he said, no, I don't have any Excel files. I don't have any files. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, how do you function? And then he said, no, go to the BI. Everything is on the BI. Then my first, I joined in December. So my first uh, month close, uh, year, quarter close happened. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was expecting somebody will call me. 
because I mean that is the time where you feel most important in life. That last five days of the quarter, or the first five days of the you know quarter. That's the most uh, uh, you know eventful time for finance people. And I was expecting some CEO will call, somebody will call, somebody will ask me where are the numbers going, what is happening. No one called. I thought, what company is this? Does no one care where we ended the numbers? Then I realized that this company is self-service. Every data is on the BI. Everyone looks at their data every day. Everyone knows where they are headed. No one cares about month end, quarter end. We don't make any presentations. There is no PPT in this organization. The only PPT we make is the audit committee deck and the board deck. And we make that because we can't, you know, uh, hassle the board members to look at BI. Other than that, we don't make any PPTs. I mean, it was such a liber liberating thing for me, but also frightening. Because for 20 years, I've made PPTs every quarter end. And suddenly, I didn't have to make PPTs. And uh, really, I felt as though, and you know, there was no firefighting. No one cared when I closed the month. You know, uh, the first, I think at some point in time, uh, Oracle, uh, we had some issues with Oracle. And instead of closing, the, we normally close in 15 days. I closed after one and a half months. Actually, no one cared. No one even knew what was happening. We had some, then we finally closed the month and I declared, yeah, month closed. Okay. So it really made a, it was a revelation for me that we can function like that. So uh, this model and it, uh, the way uh, NHS embraced uh, e e analytics and information, it's been recognized in multiple uh, areas. So it's not like something internal and I'm telling you a story. Uh, though I've been talking about storytelling, but it's a real story. It has been uh, recognized in every magazine globally, though in India very few people know, whether it is Fortune, Forbes, Bloomberg, Harvard, everyone has spoken about this model, which, we, which NH has been following. And I feel that for us as finance, it's really possible to imagine that future and lead that future and get there. We have to make ourselves redundant. We have to make the things that we are, we spoke about the triangle and the ultra triangle, one badly put chart. But that we have to make ourselves redundant from that analytics bucket to move to the action bucket, the role that Baskar plays. So uh, this is the other aspect. And this was, I think this question was asked by Mary saying that uh, how do we, uh, you know, what are the uh, use cases? And you know, for me, it's very heartening. This uh, one slide I've been presenting for five years. In fact, I had to go and check my last year UBS forum and check if I've already not presented this slide. Uh, this part, I uh, have been presenting for five years that eventually a day will come where FPNA will become redundant. You don't need an FPNA person to tell the business what is their performance. An AI chatbot will be able to actually give you, like an Amazon chatbot, will be able to tell you what was my turnover, what are the um, uh, what was the, what was it last year? What are the key f uh, factors that I have to be aware of? And I'm so happy that we are in the advanced stages of building that in my organization. Next month we are going live. For the current quarter uh, organization reviews, next, sorry, not, not next month, next week we are going live. Our OC reviews are starting from the uh, next week. We are going to be using this chat facility which helps us we go into the BI and we ask saying, I am reviewing, say, unit Mysore. Give me top five exceptions in Mysore that I need to review. And it's going to pick up saying these five parameters are off budget. Why don't you look at them? So then I'm not needed at all to ask those questions. The, I think the chatbot will already ask the questions and, you know, the business just need to answer. So these are areas which finance can drive. There are, of course, many other, uh, you know, uh, areas, revenue, cash flow forecasting. I think a lot of people work on it and this is, these are, you know, proven case studies. Many of you in your organizations may already be doing. Similarly, customer payment predictions, that's again a lot of organizations do. Fraud predictions, a lot of organizations work on, uh, you know, very uh, advanced algorithms on fraud predictions. And uh, credit risk predictions, I think banks just live on that. They are able to very effectively uh, predict uh, credit risks of uh, <coughs> of their potential borrowers. Now, the one aspect here is that, and this was a question someone had asked saying, 
you know, this is all, this is very fancy and I think the first person who asked, this is all very fancy and you are asking some, uh, you are giving all this, but then finally it all comes down to the bottom line. And when you go to the CFO, do they have the money to invest? Now, at least I have seen in most of the cases, there is a business case. The business case has, cannot be built saying, I have uh, five people doing the work today. Now those five people will go away if I put one AI tool. It will never work. You need those five people. You need to upskill those five people to do better jobs. But where the business case will come is that what business outcomes I can influence. Can I collect my receivables faster? And we have to put that leap of faith. Can I collect faster? Can I reduce my risks? Can I reduce my bad debts? What business outcomes can we drive? Those are the line items that have to go into the business case to be able to create a future. Now, <coughs> we, this my, my uh, entire topic is about uh, mindset. And so I'm going to talk about some of the aspects of making that flip. Making that flip from being a traditional accountant, controller, um, business partner to someone who is the co-CEO, like Bhaskar said, co-pilot to the CEO. Uh, from fact to observation to insight to action. Now, can we hold, own the entire value chain? And what are the facts that we are going to look at is very important. There are many, uh, many finance people that want to look at facts that can fit into an Excel sheet. Now, um, many times I have these conversations with analysts and they keep asking us questions uh, because we are a, a little bit of a, you know, um, socially leaning organization. So therefore, we don't set, uh, though we are a listed company, we have a socially leaning uh, approach. So we are, our realization is not very high and uh, uh, we still make, you know, mid of the pack margins. We don't make the top of the pack margins that healthcare delivers. So whenever we sit in front of analysts, the question the analysts ask is saying that, you know, where will, how will this revenue go, grow? How will this margin grow? So I tell them that my margin will not grow. I will stay where I am because there is a socially leaning aspect to my company. We are not looking at to be extraordinarily profitable. I will not cross and become my competitor. That will never happen. But I will still create value for you. And this is why I will create value for you. And when you sit down and explain to them with facts that are not numbers, but then why you will create value, then some understand, some don't understand because many still want to fill their Excel sheet because that's how they have to, you know, make their uh, investment decisions. <laughs> but that conversation, our ability to have that conversation on behalf of our business is what will help us pick that bigger box. Outside in. Now, uh, this is a, you know, many times, uh, this is something that uh, I feel irritated also sometimes, but many times my friends, uh, any circle I go to, you know, this is a common comment people ask, do you even work? You know, you're always speaking at forums, you know, I maybe do one forum a month. So I say I have 288 hours in a uh, week, in a month, and I spend two hours investing in myself. I don't come to these forums to speak. I come to these forums to learn. I mean, what I learned from Bhaskar's session today was amazing for me. And so many times we think investing in ourselves, being, understanding what's happening outside, learning, doing something new is all waste of time or it is taking away productive work time. But that's really sharpening the saw. The more we sharpen the saw and more we bring outside in to the organization, it's a win-win. We grow ourselves, we grow the organization, we create value in the role. Uh, owning business outcomes. So I cannot be successful if I have uh, ensured that my books closed on time and I've reported uh, whatever revenue margin I had to report on time. That's not success for me. And this, I think, uh, to be fair, over 10 years to now, every CFO looks at business outcomes today. I am not, I have not met uh, many CFOs, any CFO actually, who says I am responsible for accounting or I am responsible for controls. Every CFO owns their business outcomes. In fact, even when you see, like the, we were running the session, she was running an introduction session in the morning. Nobody introduced themselves as, I am the finance head or whatever. Everybody introduced themselves as, this is my company, this is what we do. So there is that pride in what organizations do. We should continue to build on that. 
we have to be a technology evangelist. That does not mean we need to learn to code. But being able to use technology for business outcomes and constantly demanding technology in the organization. See, many times CFOs uh, end up saying, okay, I'm very happy you're bringing all this fancy tech, but where is the business case? Now, it's okay, it's a good question to ask, but maybe we can step two steps forward and play that role in making that business case. And finally, <laughs> driving strategic business conversations. Now, that is all the role is going to be. Everything else, the AI can take over. Everything else, the AI can take over. Today, for example, in uh, Narayana for our SOPs, finance SOPs, processes, etc. Earlier, we used to have like a, uh, a huge process uh, map. There was a SharePoint portal where all the SOPs were uploaded. So, if someone need to know how to do CapEx, they had to go search for the CapEx, whatever. Now, what there is a, a Gen AI bot that sits on top of it. The person just need to type saying, how do I raise a CapEx proposal? It will tell you how to go raise the CapEx proposal. Then and there it will tell you the conversational way. See, if the person he says, it says, go okay, take approval from the controller, the person asks saying, I don't know who the controller is, it will say, this is person is the controller, go talk to him. So that is the level of maturity that has come today itself. Can you imagine where it will go 10 years from now? So a lot of stuff that we are doing today will all boil down to, are we able to drive strategic business conversations? So that's really... Uh, my slide, I wanted to keep it uh, short, simple, uh, within time and uh, some of my stories because Bhaskar already spoke about so I didn't uh, elaborate uh, so much but our future is at the intersection of human imagination and machine intelligence and how we as finance professionals can harness that future is really the make or break into uh, where we are headed. If we have time, I can take questions, certainly. Yeah, do we have any questions? Okay, thank you so much ma'am.